what I think uh, companies, U.S. companies and foreign companies are looking at is that the growth rate is much faster, obviously, in China and in the, in the BRICS in India, uh, Latin America, than it is in Europe and the United States. So on the one hand, they say, mm, we understand doing business in Europe and the United States. We think that politically it's, it maybe is more stable. We don't think that uh, things are going to blow up. Uh, maybe that's not so true about Europe, but I think in the long run it's true of Europe. But uh, on the other hand, we're only going to get uh, GDP growth at uh, maybe 2.5% or 1% if we're lucky, whereas in, in China and these other countries, uh, at least once they get through the current problems, they're going to be growing at 7% or 5% if it's, if it's Latin America. Not only that, but they also see the sort of middle class, so the, the big lump in the, in the income distribution starting to get through that point where you, you really are, the size of the middle class is expanding very rapidly. So a lot of companies that are in the consumer goods area or, or in, in, in the, 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 the serving that expanding middle class, not only do they see an economy that's growing more rapidly, but they see a middle class that's growing explosively. So they're just sort of salivating about that, that opportunity. So where do I think foreign investment is going? I think the U.S. is going to get a smaller share than it has gotten traditionally. I think we are still, uh, you know, there's still a lot of money here, and there'll still be a lot of investment here. But the challenge, in a way, is to say, let's make sure we continue to get our share because that expanding economies and expanding middle class is going to make <coughs> investing in, in China, in India, in Latin America, Africa even, is, is much more attractive than it has been historically.